Do you recall the early days of the internet? It was a simpler time, a fertile ground for ideas that produced many of the websites we know and love today. However, there were some casualties along the way, the most prominent of which was a site dear to many people's hearts, MySpace. But what destroyed this titan? Watch till the end to find out. MySpace was formerly the world's most popular website. That is why its incredible rise and fall between 2005 and 2008 is one of the most compelling stories in internet history. It serves as a reminder of how unstable the digital world can be. MySpace is frequently mocked these days. It represents a carefree, youthful age before the internet matured. However, MySpace was at the top of the world between 2005 and 2008. It was the sole solution to social networking, with more monthly visits than Yahoo or Google today and a price tag of a whooping $12 billion. MySpace was a behemoth that few could have anticipated would ever fail. In the United States, MySpace was created by programmers at the internet marketing firm eUniverse. The site was created and released into the wild in just 10 days during the summer of 2003 by its founders, Brad Greenspan, Krista Wolfer and Tom Anderson. MySpace expanded swiftly, but to be fair, it had a head start. MySpace simply skipped the marketing farce and reached its initial users quickly thanks to Universe's massive mailing list of over 20 million clients. In just two years, it had grown to become the world's largest social network and the first to reach a global audience. MySpace's growth was fueled by a number of expensive deals one of which came almost out of nowhere. That's when Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation, a multinational media company, paid more than $500 million for the site. MySpace was the corporation's ticket to the fast-growing world of online advertising. In just one year, MySpace's worth tripled, triggering a chain reaction of mergers and investments. MySpace achieved 100 million members in 2006 and inked the largest agreement of its life with Google, which guaranteed guaranteed at $900 million over three years. Things were heating up in 2007. Please take a moment and subscribe to Power and Pennies to get more incredible contents from us. Also, this will help us a lot to reach more people. Now, MySpace was receiving about 350,000 new signups per day, translating to $12 billion worth. The site was just connecting the world in unusual ways. MySpace appeared to be too big to fail. Something from MySpace's past was stirring in the midst of its prosperity. Something was starting to rise from the shadows, preparing to strike. In early 2005, a college student named Mark Zuckerberg offered MySpace $75 million to buy his new social networking website. However, MySpace declined the offer. They didn't think anything of it. Why should they? How could anyone have predicted that this site would eventually change into the media monster that would mark the end of MySpace? And now, for the website you've all been waiting to hear about, Facebook. Of course, it had to be Facebook. Founded in 2004 by a group of four college students, the site appeared harmless at first. Facebook, on the other hand, was better designed and easier to use than MySpace. Furthermore, Facebook had one significant benefit over MySpace. It did not have advertisements. By 2008, all of the previous handshakes had come back to bite MySpace. Because of its massive arrangements with News Corporation and Google, the site had to nearly double its quantity of advertisements. This was because investors expected revenue in exchange for such a significant sum of money. And, as any website owner knows, in order to make money, you need advertisements. As a result, MySpace became known as the Internet Slum. It was loaded with problems and had pages and pages of shady advertisements. It was difficult to find your way around. To make matters worse, the site was displaying extremely sexualized and even pornographic imagery. As you can expect, this was wasn't going well for the company's public image. A wave of teen suicides link it to cyberbullying on MySpace has landed the SATA in an increasing number of expensive lawsuits. And in 2006, a Connecticut study confirmed for the first time that MySpace was no longer safe to use, particularly for kids. More red flags appeared in 2008, when Facebook surpassed MySpace in terms of search traffic, and then everything exploded. MySpace lost nearly 40 million unique users each month, as well as both of its co-founders and many of its potential advertisers, investors and buyers, in a wave of setbacks. In the end, the majority of the company's employees were laid off. 
MySpace even tried to change its website to look more like Facebook in a desperate attempt to compete, but it failed. As they say, the rest is history. However, MySpace's downfall is due to factors other than software. MySpace has become an expert in one area, music, over the years. It had evolved into a portal for music promotion, listening to songs, and sharing them with others. Artists such as Adele, Calvin Harris, and Arctic Monkeys all got their start on MySpace. But this was only part of the issue. MySpace was far too established in the music industry to leave. It was becoming more of a music promotion website than a social network. Furthermore, as Facebook grew in popularity, many began to realize that MySpace wasn't all that sociable. You weren't connected with friends and family, but rather with strangers. Their genuine names couldn't even be seen. Facebook has revealed an unpleasant truth. The internet no longer cares about niches. The future social networking platforms will be open to all. Despite the fact that Facebook had taken the lead on a global scale, MySpace doubled down and produced a product in which it had invested $120 million in MySpace music. In an attempt to unite music supporters, Sony, BMG, Universal and Warner Music Group merged music from three of the four main labels. But, like the previous site, it was problematic and nearly impossible to find. Unsurprisingly, it had little effect on MySpace's recovery. This was a watershed moment, however, when MySpace ultimately decided not to compete with Facebook and instead stick to its specialty to the bitter end. And this is where MySpace currently stands. It still operates as a music website, but it's largely dormant. With the exception of the rare article, it's now just a grave where you can leave your flowers and move on. Fear of change, overconfidence, and complacency are all characteristics of majorly successful corporations that eventually lead to their demise. And as I previously stated, being too large to fail is a risky philosophy. No organization is too big to fail, especially in the digital sector, where change is the norm. Although Facebook played a significant role in the demise of MySpace, it was not completely to blame. MySpace made numerous errors as well. Deals like the one with Google, as we now know, compelled MySpace to prioritize monetization above anything else. This resulted in MySpace's crowded and unpleasant user interface, which led to a loss in user interest and finally, its demise. MySpace was also governed by businessmen rather than data engineers, who had no idea how to make their service interesting to users. Facebook, on the other hand, was comprised of data engineers capable of creating considerably more personalized experiences for users. Finally, MySpace failed to evolve due to the attitude that has killed off so many of the firms. Because the site couldn't keep up with the times, it was surpassed by newer and more innovative social networking platforms. But, hey, considering the monolithic size of organizations like Facebook nowadays and all the difficulties that come with them, it's occasionally wonderful to have an underdog sites like MySpace to take us back to a simpler period. We were just getting our bearings and learning how to connect with one another on the harsh and unpredictable World Wide Web. It's interesting to speculate on what life would have been like if MySpace hadn't gone so bad. Maybe it will keep updating and developing and will continue to be the largest social media platform even today. And maybe even Facebook will be acquired by MySpace. Who knows? Anyway, let's dig more into your MySpace experiences. Did you have an account on MySpace back then? Share your memories below and let us know if you were aware of all of the issues that contributed to MySpace's downfall. But did you know that there is a Chinese company that owns everything and rules humans? Just go watch the video on your screen to understand why. Thank you for sticking with me till the end of this video.